It's Monday, April 17, 2017. This is PSN News. The highly anticipated blue-white game is finally here and we have all the details coming up in sports. We'll also bring you the latest updates on the changes to Greek life at Penn State and the responses. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Hunter Holbert. And I'm Elisa Vasquez. On Wednesday, the Interfraternity Council responded to Penn State President Eric Barron's open letter with an open letter of its own. The IFC asked for administration to stop its top-down approach and include the Greek community in conversations. The IFC also asked for support as it has lacked a full-time director of fraternity and sorority life. The letter also criticized Barron for using the media instead of directly working with students to address the issues. The IFC also called on Greek life, the student body, and alumni to help make changes for the betterment of Penn State. This all comes in the wake of Beta Theta Pi pledge Tim Piazza's death in early February. Penn State student Jordan Korn was sentenced to up to 23 and a half months in jail after being found with about 8,000 Xanax pills and $15,000. Prior to this incident, Korn's apartment was searched by police in February 2015. They found three vacuum-sealed bags containing Xanax pills, $5,000 in cash, and a key to a safety deposit box containing almost $12,000. District Attorney Stacy Parks Miller said Korn's actions can have a negative impact on the community and it's important to hold him accountable. Penn State's mock trial team has advanced to the National Championship Tournament for the first time in three years. The Daily Collegian reports that Penn State is one of 48 teams who advanced after preliminary rounds. The mock trial team meets four days a week for two hours, presenting and criticizing drafts, directs, and speeches. This year, they competed at 12 tournaments with an age discrimination case. At Nationals, however, the team will be using a case about copyright infringement. The championships on April 21st will be held in the same courthouse that O.J. Simpson was tried. Many of us walk by Old Main every day, but have not taken the time to explore the iconic building. This Wednesday from 1 to 4 p.m., students will have the opportunity to take a tour of Old Main and learn about its history. The open house event is run by the Lion Ambassadors, whose mission is to communicate the university's history, tradition, and personality to students and alumni through their programs. The Old Main open house event will allow students to climb the bell tower, as well as participate in activities such as mini golf, carnival themed games. There will also be free Berkery Creamery ice cream and cake. This event is free and open to the public. This past weekend, students were able to experience live music, comedy, and art right here on campus. Reporter Aaron Kemp was there for the yearly Penn State Art Crawl. On Saturday, April 15th, Penn State students organizing the multiple arts hosted their annual arts crawl in multiple buildings, including Peterson Building, the Visual Arts Building, and the Palmer Museum. Artists came together to share their work. Among the most common forms of art were paintings and live musical acts. There was even a person drawing caricatures. Freshman SOMA member Jake Tiernan spoke on the atmosphere of the arts community here at Penn State. No one really expects you to be great or good at all at first, so you can kind of come and just fumble around a little bit and get your feet, and you just meet all these really wonderful people who really just want to encourage you and see you grow as like a musician or an artist or a performer. The support Jake spoke on was apparent in the reaction of the audience members. Penn State is full of creativity but we actually have a very strong arts community and arts college here, so I think that's really cool. Now. If you didn't get a chance to witness this creativity for yourself, don't fret. The Arts Call is a free annual event. Reporting for PSN News, I'm Erin Kemp. Up next, Alyssa Devine will bring you the latest sports news. Stay tuned. 
from the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Hi, I'm student meteorologist Robert Johnson from the Penn State Campus Weather Service with your forecast for today. Right now, we're looking like we're going to see some temperatures returning back to normal as we saw today and as we'll see tomorrow. As we get into the middle of the week, showers and thunderstorms are more likely. And then for the weekend, not as much sunshine, but it does not look like a complete washout. For our Easter Resurrection Sunday yesterday, we got up to a high temperature of 77 degrees, and that is well above our average. We are at an average of about 60 to 61 degrees around this time here in State College, but well above average yesterday, we are returning to more normal temperatures as we head into the rest of the week. So for tomorrow as we're heading out to class, 48 degrees at about 930 in the morning, and we stick with a whole bunch of sunshine throughout the day, 3 o'clock, 61, and then as we head on into the evening, 930, 56 degrees out there and still looking pretty clear across the region. And then we begin to see some of these clouds push into our region for Wednesday, and that sticks around as we could be seeing some rain showers pushing through for our Wednesday, changing things up a little bit. But as for tonight, a low temperature of 41 degrees, mostly clear skies, winds northwesterly 5 to 10 miles per hour and then for tomorrow we wake up to a whole lot of sunshine at 65 degrees sunny skies those winds looking light and variable it's going to be a great day for your Tuesday tomorrow here's your seven day forecast again for Tuesday sunny 65 degrees those rain showers come in for Wednesday at 60 and then for Thursday a chance of a thunderstorm we still can't rule out that possibility 72 degrees we drop back down to 60 degrees for our Friday looking pretty cloudy but hey at least we're dry for the blue and white game on Sunday Saturday. It looks dry right now. Mostly cloudy skies and a temperature of 56 degrees and then some rain returns for our Sunday at 59. Thank you for watching the Campus Weather Service. I'm Robert Johnson. Sports is next on PSN News. I'm Melissa Devine with your PSN News Sports Update. The annual Blue-White Game will kick off this Saturday at 3 p.m. in Beaver Stadium. Penn State football is returning a majority of the roster that won them the Big Ten Championship this past season. The team is also bringing in four-star and five-star recruits for next season. And with all of that in mind, there's a lot of excitement for the Lions to give an exhibition for the upcoming season. Penn State's past spring scrimmages have usually been one-sided because of the way the roster is divided. The first and second team players are usually grouped onto the blue team roster, and then the reserves and scout team play on the white team. But with more depth on this year's roster and the best recruiting class up to date, this year's blue-white game should be a more competitive and thrilling game. And now volleyball has a, had a dominant weekend. The Nittany Lions capped off its regular season in fashion, sweeping Charleston and George Mason. With the two commanding wins, Penn State clinched the top seed in the EIVA Conference Tournament giving the blue and white home court advantage at Penn State. As the EIVA tournament approaches, a bid for the NCAA tournament is on the line. If they take down Princeton on Thursday, they will advance to the conference championship against St. Francis and Sacred Heart on Saturday. And what will the conference champ receive? A bid to the NCAA tournament. And it's mid-April, so that means playoff hockey is in full swing. With the first week under wraps, the Pittsburgh Penguins are sitting pretty at 3-0 in their series with the Columbus Blue Jackets. The Penguins were able to overcome a 3-1 deficit last night in Columbus to tie the game in the second period. Each team had a goal apiece in the third to bring the game to overtime, the first of the series. Pittsburgh became the ultimate victors with the goal from Jake Gutsnell 13 minutes into OT. It was also Gutsnell's first playoff hat-trick. This is the first ever career playoff hat-trick by a rookie in Penn's history, and it was also a game winner. The Penguins are back in Columbus Tuesday night to try to close out the series 4-0. Well, that's your PSN News Sports Update. Back to the newscast, back to the news desk right after this. Welcome back to PSN News. Tonight we have Isaac Will with us, the newly elected UPUA Governmental Affairs Chair. How are you doing tonight, Isaac? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for it's being good. with us. Sure. So first of all, talk to us about what UPUA is for those who don't know and your role within the Governmental Affairs Committee. Sure, um, so the UPUA stands for the University Park Undergraduate Association. Um, and basically, it's the, uh, the student government for the undergraduate student body. Um, right now, I am the governmental affairs chair of uh, the UPUA. So. Cool. So what do you do as governmental affairs chair? What is your role within that committee? What do you do within sure. students and within the committee itself? Sure. Um, so basically, um, any th interactions that student have, students have with uh, the government at any level, whether it be 
um, local down in the borough or state or federal government, um, a lot of the different initiatives and things come uh, through that committee. Um, so there are different things that we tackle. Uh, at the state level, we do a lot of stuff with um, you know, advocating for appropriations to the state legislature. Uh, same to the federal, um, the federal government, whenever they listen, I guess. Uh, and at the borough um, level, we have a lot of different involvement, whether it be advocating for downtown lighting or ensure, ensuring that um, student rights are protected, uh, whether it be um, with housing or anything else. So different things along those lines. So you mentioned at the state level getting appropriations and funding. Sure. I know a lot of students are interested in the student debt problem and yeah. making college more affordable. What are you guys doing to make sure that that is tackled? Sure. So um, advocacy, advocacy, advocacy. Um, and you know we can we can tackle that a couple different ways. Um, obviously, you know on the committee we have uh, say about probably about 15 members now. By the uh, what, by the time things really get started next year, we'll have about 25. Um, and we do a lot of letter, letter writing to uh, different uh, legislators. Um, we actually have Penn State's Capital Day, if you've heard of that before, and that's where um, a Penn students, not just Penn State students, not just in the EPA, but uh, just in general, you know, get on a bus and go to Harrisburg and set up meetings with um, different representatives at the state level. Um, so yeah, we do a lot of letter writing, a lot of trying to set up individual meetings. Um, and then also, uh, we've started coordinating with other um, state-related schools like Temple, Lincoln, and Pitt. Uh, so we're trying to coordinate those efforts and really advocate to the state legislature all at once for the sake of students. Um, and those state-related schools that I mentioned. So. so what specifically with initiatives are you guys starting? What new initiatives do you guys have going? Sure. Um, so a lot of the initiatives now are actually continuations of uh, the continuations of things that we've already worked on. Um, one of the big things that we're advocating to at least the governor for is for uh, him to appoint another student to the Board of Trustees. Uh, he's done that for a very long time now, I think since sometime in the 1970s, so we'd like to continue um, that, uh, like that, um, that initiative. Um, and, and different things like that, I guess. Are there any changes within UPUA that we can expect that will have any impacts for students? Sure, so the, um, and this isn't something that I'm too heavily involved in, but uh, I, others on the steering committee um, are creating the, uh, it's like an outreach committee, um, and the main goal of this uh, committee within the UPUA will be to reach out to other student organizations who don't feel like the voice is um, heard as well by the organization. Um, so I guess the, the idea behind this is to really uh, make sure that we're hearing from all student voices and working for every student on campus. So how do you involve students in this process? I know you, the biggest job is to represent the students, but how do you involve the students and make them aware of what you guys are doing? Uh, you mean governmental affairs? -wise? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good question. That's actually one of the big issues we have to tackle. Um, so I, I mean, I guess the big thing that we do is uh, try to reach out to a lot of the political organizations on campus, um, like the College Democrats or the College Republicans or the College Independents. Um, and trying to get them involved to increase things like voter turnout, especially in the borough with elections coming up. Um, and really just get out the vote uh, is one thing. And then also try to get people to advocate and hopefully that you know, they can find an issue that they're, they're passionate about and um, advocate on behalf of it. So. Awesome. Well, that's all that time we have tonight. Thank cool. you for coming to join us, Thanks Isaac. We appreciate your time. And we'll be back with national news headlines coming up next. Don't go anywhere. Four students at the University of Idaho were hospitalized Thursday night after a test of rocket fuel set off an explosion on campus. Moscow, Idaho Police Chief James Fry Jr. said the students were at close range when the fuel ignited. The Washington Post reports that the students underwent surgeries overnight and were in good condition Friday afternoon. Police and the FBI and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives are involved in the non-criminal investigation. The authorities have preliminarily concluded that this was a tragic yet accidental event. At least 12 former teachers sexually molested students at Choate Rosemary Hall, according to a recent statement from the Connecticut boarding school that JFK attended. In the 1980s, one student contracted herpes from an English teacher, and another student was raped on a school trip to Costa Rica. The teachers were not arrested, but those accused of misconduct were able to resign. According to an expert lawyer, there are more opportunities for teachers to sexually abuse their students in private school settings because it is a closed school system. The Choate headmaster hopes the investigation helps the community come together and learn from the past. Former New England Patriot tight end Aaron Hernandez has been found not guilty of murder in the 2012 shooting of two men on a Boston street. Prosecutors in the case said Hernandez shot Daniel De Abro and Safiro Furtado after one bumped into him at a nightclub earlier that evening. Defense lawyers countered that Alexander Bailey, a friend of Hernandez, actually did the shooting. 
27-year-old Hernandez is currently serving a life sentence without the possibility of parole. He was found guilty in the 2013 shooting of Odin Lloyd, who had been dating the sister of Hernandez's fiance. He is currently appealing that conviction. The roof of the Balago Hotel and Casino caught fire this past Thursday. The 911 call was received just before 11 p.m. with units from the Clark County Fire Department responded to the scene within five minutes. Assistant Chief Larry Hadu said that firefighting efforts were extremely challenging because of the location of the fire and access to the location. In videos from the scene, bystanders watched the fire from the hotel's water fountain as firefighters and police surrounded the area. And that's all for us tonight here at PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter at PSN News. Thank you for joining us.